Hi everyone, I finished this art journal and what I'm going to do today is some cover for it. So I'm going to start with some tissue paper and I'm always taking the pinks that I don't like because I know that I'm only using it for texture in the back for the cover. <clears throat> it doesn't have to be a large piece that will cover everything like this. You can use it, you can do it in pieces, whatever you like. So what I'm going to do first is use the smaller pieces to get some cover and texture and then move on. So I'm just going to take some white glue with a large brush and start. Now, if you don't have tissue paper, you can use either the backing of a paper napkin or you can use paper towels the only difference will be is that the texture will be a little bit different the the softer the paper is the less texture you get or the texture will be a uh, more subtle than uh, a paper that like tissue paper that is a little bit more uh, thick and I don't know <laughs> a little bit harder so I've got this uh, piece of tissue paper and I'm just making sure that I will have wrinkles so I'm squishing it and just making it like this with a lot of wrinkles I'm putting it here on my uh, journal and again you can decide how much texture you want and I'm leaving a little bit uh, out of the edges so when everything is done I can flip them over and tuck everything in nicely so again here I can spread it out without uh, too much texture or I can uh, squish it and make more texture this is completely up to you what you like so I've got rid of this piece I've got another piece here that I can use and again I'm just squishing it it's also uh, easier to deal with tissue paper after <laughs> squishing it let's see so just putting it here making a little bit more wrinkles and I'm also going over this piece so I need to put more glue here and I'm all even when I'm not overlapping between the pieces I'm going to go over and put glue on it just makes everything uh, stick together and it's I don't know it seals everything nicely and also all the wrinkles so that's what I'm going to do uh, all around my cover and when it's uh, dry I will come back and we'll continue to the next phase I'll be back okay so once the tissue paper is dry and uh, you are uh, going to the next uh, stage and it's putting primer on this and I'm using a white gesso and a large brush and I'm just going over all my texture and making sure I'm getting inside all the wrinkles so I'm just covering everything with gesso and of course now I will have to wait until this is completely dry before I'm doing anything on top so this is just the preparing of the cover for whatever is coming next so uh, if you don't have gesso you can try and mix white acrylic paint with baby powder talc and if you want of course if you want black gesso then the same thing only with black acrylic paint so here we go I'm just making sure I'm getting inside all these wrinkles 
that I will have a nice coverage like so and I can also spread it although if it's still wet then you need to uh, be careful about the spine you don't want uh, uh, to fold it when it's still wet it can tear everything or make some damage what you uh, already done on the cover and I can see I've missed some here so this is it now I'm just letting it be and letting this dry I'll be back Okay, so this is dry <laughs> at last. The more texture you've got, the more uh, time it takes to dry. And I want to put some design on uh, the cover. I am in the mood for circles and that's what I'm going for. You can do anything and you can even uh, print something that you like uh, and just copy the design, whatever uh, you, you're you want to put on your cover I'm going to do some circles and I'm going to do them with a glue gun if you don't have a glue gun you uh, can still do any kind of design you want and you can use uh, things like jute or twine like uh, something like this just glue the design you want and that's it so I'm just taking all kinds of circles and I'm going to mark them on my uh, cover like let's put one here doesn't have to be precise just so I can see it and go over with the glue gun and I'm going for all kinds of sizes now you can do it only on the front of the uh, cover or you can do it also in the back up to you what you would like to do and let's see let's put one here like so and let's do one that goes off the edge like this and well let's see maybe I don't know yeah let's put one maybe <laughs> I'm not sure where I want another circle and let's go one here and just maybe one smaller one let's see maybe one smaller one here like so and we'll see right now that's what i'm going to do here and we'll see we'll see as we go along so i've got the design that i want and i've got the glue gun and all i'm going to do is just go and over what i've marked with the glue gun easier to move the journal than your hand in a circle motion like so and of course let it dry completely before doing anything on top so that's what I'm going to do and as I said if you don't have a glue gun or if you are not feeling comfortable or if you even have one of those glue guns that keep on uh, making puddles of glue and you can't control it then just take jute or twine and make your design so I'm going to keep at it and I'll be back okay this is dry I'm only doing the front with this design the other will be without this and before I'm starting to uh, paint I want to get rid of uh, all these edges I want to tuck them in I'm only going to put some glue 
and first I'm doing uh, the corners just easier for me doesn't really matter which glue you are using whatever you've got and I'm not even trying to be precise or careful because this is going to be covered I will show you in a minute so just putting enough glue so it will hold and like so tucking it in doesn't need to be nice just so it will hold in place because I've left the first uh, page of the journal and what I'm going to do when all these edges are tucked in I'm going to glue this on top and even that this one is uh, dirty from all kinds of paints from the other pages I can still take another uh, paper and cover it but I don't need to be concerned about being uh, neat about folding and putting down the edges inside and here where it reaches, reaches the spine you need to take to cut it so you can fold it in like so so that's all there is to it in terms of getting rid of the edges of course if you prefer you can just cut it and leave it be make sure just that it's glued down if you prefer to cut the, the excess here we go and I'm doing it now just so it won't bother me while I'm painting the cover right like this so oops got several colors I've got some dark brown here I've got some chestnut and I'm going to play with the colors I've got some bird sienna and I also have some dark red and some uh, rusty orange I don't know what to call it okay and I'm taking a soft brush so I can uh, paint my texture and get inside all the wrinkles and I'm starting with the dark brown especially in the edges now I'm going around the circles inside the circles I want to put another color and I'm going in I will go between the, the browns I've got here and also the dark red and just play with the colors now I can go over the glue gun or I can uh, later on put some gesso on it if I'm uh, concerned that it won't be uh, it won't accept any other paint and but the acrylic paint is quite uh, enough to cover it I'm not being very careful when I'm going when I will go and paint inside the circles I can put on again gesso in the places that uh, got a little bit more of the browns I can fix it so as you can see I'm just switching between the colors and as I go I'm letting them blend the only thing is that I'm keeping the darker brown to the edges it just gives a uh, more I don't know if to call it realistic but I don't know it's more um, I like it more that's it <laughs> I don't have the words to explain it so I'm mixing as I go don't really care where everything goes it's quite random that how I'm putting 
the colors here. And if I feel that some areas are too dark or too a light I can also fix it but I really don't care I just want to put some paint that will almost almost look I'm not trying to make it look like leather but <laughs> just playing with it and if it does look at the end something like old leather then I'm happy if not also happy And of course, I'm going to do it also at the back of the cover. And there it's even easier. I don't have to avoid the circles. Just putting down paint. So I'm going to continue doing this and cover everything. And then I'm going to come back and we'll continue. Okay, so everything is dry, now I want to uh, deal with the circles and I am going to use some uh, more acrylic paint. I've got some yellow, I've got some orange and I don't know, maybe citrus uh, green, we'll see. I'm starting with the yellow and I'm going to put it inside this uh, large circle very quickly and easily and nothing to it so the only thing is I'm using a soft brush and I'm putting pressure so the acrylic paint will get into again all the texture I've got here here we go so now I just want to give it a little bit of a less flat a block of color so I'm taking just a little bit of the orange and I'm adding it here at the, the bottom and I'm just letting it blend into the yellow just to make it look a little bit more uh, or a little bit less flat <laughs> so this is one circle and I'm just taking another brush and I'm going to do one circle with, let's do an orange one here. It's not bright enough. I have another uh, acrylic paint, orange uh, acrylic paint. This is better, I think. So again, just going inside all this texture and of course let's do i don't know let's do this one also i have a lot of paint here so trying to use it somewhere else okay so let's take another brush <laughs> and go for the citrus green only I want to do the same thing I've done here so maybe I'll take I still have this dark red so I'm gonna add it here and again look it make it look less flat like I've got some shading to the circle and I'm letting it blend into the orange also here something like that if it doesn't blend very well I'm just adding orange and making it blend better so let's do some um, some circle with the citrus green And of course I will have to find some darker green to do 
the shading. This citrus green is a little bit lighter than I would like, but I'm going to just leave it be as is. And let's see if I can get my hand on something to blend it with that will be a little bit more darker. Let's see. I've got another green here. Just putting a little bit on the brush, or let's tr try it here. Yeah. Okay. So a little bit of the darker one here. And blending it like so. I can also take white and do the same thing on top here to make it look more a... Uh, 3d for that matter so uh, let's see where do i want another a citrus one i don't know <laughs> let's do another one here and 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 i don't know and a little bit of darkening on the bottom like so now I need to figure out where I'm putting the other <laughs> the other uh, colors let's do another yellow one and of course I'm taking a little bit of the orange and doing some shading at the bottom not an exact science just having fun with it I think I will put another yellow one here and a little bit of the orange yeah something like that and 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 let's do another orange oops too much I think I'll just do another one, another citrus one here. Yeah, something like that. And a little bit of darkening at the bottom. Trying to blend, very boring, repeating the same thing over and over again, I know. And of course, this needs to dry, and then we'll continue. I'm back. Now, I want to uh, make all this texture we worked on uh, more visible, and I want to add some shine. I've got here some copper, bronze, and uh, gold acrylic paint, and I've got some sponges, and probably we'll use some uh, brush we'll see you can go about it in several ways that i will show you now um, you can just take a hard bristle brush take a little bit of the acrylic paint dab it load the brush but make sure that the the paint is going in but not a uh, too much of it <laughs> <laughs> and very gently you go about where you want it and you dry brush over the texture and I'm keeping the bronze like I've used the dark brown to the edges then I'm going to use the bronze to the edges to where my darkest colors are like so and I'm dry brushing over it don't know how much of it you can see 
because all the, the shimmery things can hardly be seen on video I will uh, bring it closer to the camera in a minute and as you can see I'm just going over the edges with the bronze and dry brushing over the texture of course if I want I can go in it's not an exact science you can put it wherever you want so this is a uh, no this is the copper the copper is the darkest so that's what I've used for the edges I'm going in now and taking a little bit of the bronze again with the brush and it doesn't have to be with the brush it can be with any kind of a sponge again taking a little bit but not something that will uh, if you squeeze the sponge it will uh, get out and you can gently again go over like this over your texture and now it's only picking the raised areas mostly the <laughs> raised areas depends how gentle you are and have patience for it so again you can dry brush you can do it with a sponge whatever works for you you can always do it on a piece a side work on it and practice and only later on a go and edit to your project when you're feeling that it works for you <laughs> now it's not as I said a, an exact science sometimes I like to go with darker color inside and mix between the copper and the bronze and uh, the gold I'm keeping the gold mostly I want to add it to inside of the circles and to the border of the circle so I'm not using it yet and uh, again we'll see later maybe I will decide to add it in several places where I want more highlights it's really how you feel about it and how, how you want it to look there <laughs> there are no rules to it and now I'm going here on the spine. Of course, I will go. I will go and do also uh, the back of the journal. But right now I'm keeping it to here. And again, if if your acrylic paint is more like paste and is very thick, you can also do it with your finger. Again, just taking a little bit and going where you want it to be. You can also use, if you have gilding wax, you can use gilding wax to pick up uh, all the details, whatever works for you. If you've got like an acrylic pen, like Posca pens, and you feel more comfortable controlling that, then again, that's what you can use to go over the raised areas. I'm going now with the gold over the edges of the circles. Maybe later on I will add some gilding wax to make it uh, shine better. I don't know. We'll see. And I don't mind when it's going inside the circle. Well, something like that. I'm bringing it closer so you can see how the metallics went on the cover. I hope you can see it. So, now I'm uh, really thinking of adding a uh, from the copper to most of this. I really like how the copper worked on it. So I'm just going in several places and adding again because I feel like it. <laughs> It seems to me that it works on this cover more than the bronze. So I'm just adding in several places.
so this is a uh, basically it and I want some shimmer and again inside the circles and I want some more gold but this is quite blend this gold I have in acrylic paint I have a gilding wax which is more effective and that's what I'm going to use right now so I'm taking a little bit of the gilding wax let's see so I've got some gilding wax and again spreading it and uh, so I will have a little bit on my finger and going inside now that I'm doing it I'm thinking that I want something interesting inside the circles so I'm not sure if it was uh, smart uh, adding now the gilding wax but I'll just put it and we'll see okay so I want something inside the circles I don't want to leave it as is I'm thinking some kind of a, a <laughs> stamp inside and I have a lot of texture here so what I need to do is decide on the stamps I want stamp it on the backing of white paper napkin and then glue it inside each circle so I've got one layer of paper napkin and let's see what am I going to take for stamping inside probably butterflies big shot here yeah so it will probably be butterflies I've got several and what else we'll see so basically what I'm going to do and let's see if it fits one large butterfly here not sure about it and this one I don't know let's see if something like this will fit eh, almost well I will try to squeeze this one in so basically what I'm going to do is take up the stamp and I'm using the backing of white paper napkin because once I glue it with white glue it will disappear into the background that's why I'm using it so one stamp at least for the large circle making sure I have enough ink here and it's probably better if I will have some craft foam underneath so to get a great print and now just flipping it over putting pressure and letting it be for a few seconds because I really like in a great print okay good enough so now I'm taking a very narrow brush with a little bit of water and going around so I can take this butterfly out of the white paper napkin like so yay and back to the cover so now the magic the magic of paper napkins I need a soft brush so it won't tear on my uh, paper napkin going with the glue all over and making sure it gets everywhere again we've got lots of texture here 
and placing my butterfly good enough here and I'm going very gently from the inside towards the outside with the glue making it slide on the paper napkin If you've got enough glue, then it will slide and not drag your paper napkin. When it's dry, it will completely disappear into the background. And I've got a little bit of excess here where it gets to the borders, but I will just glue it like this. And I'm tucking it. <laughs> into the border like so just making sure everything is adhered nicely into all this texture so I'm going to do more butterflies that will fit inside the circles and I'll come back So here it is, decided that I only need three uh, <laughs> butterflies in the more, the larger circles and I'm leaving it be. So this is my uh, art journal cover. Here is the back that I've added uh, some metallics and just blended the copper bronze and the yellow, uh, the gold. <laughs> and uh, this is it. That's uh, the whole thing. So I hope you liked it, hope you try your hand at something like that and thank you for leaving me comments below, I'll be seeing you in my next video, bye for now.